Volvo partnered with BlackBerry Q next to develop their next generation heavy duty trucks. Does it even matter? Well, let's dive in. What's up guys, welcome to Bullish Bets. On this channel, we cover all things related to stocks and investing. Today, we wanna to talk about the announcement Volvo made with BlackBerry. Before I get started, I also wanna show you guys that I got BlackBerry Silence. I've been making a whole bunch of BlackBerry videos and it only makes sense if I supported BlackBerry in terms of you know, getting their security software. And I've been using it and it's been great. So let's get started. Now, Volvo announced that they will partner with BlackBerry QNX for its dynamic software platform. Volvo is the leading manufacturer for heavy duty trucks, buses, and construction equipment. QNX will be the main software for Volvo's new flight of heavy duty trucks of more than 300,000 vehicles. It was also announced recently that Scania AB, the Swedish provider of transport solutions including trucks and buses, have chosen BlackBerry to provide the OS and hypervisor as the platform for its new generation vehicles. This shows signs that BlackBerry operating system is cornering the commercial automotive market, which is very exciting. According to the European Environment Agency, Volvo and Scania holds 14 and 13% of the European trucking industry respectively. Volvo trucks is in gray right here and Scania is in yellow. That's around 30% of the market that BlackBerry is already working with in terms of running its operating systems. Both these companies essentially gave the same reason as to why they chose BlackBerry. They reiterate the point that BlackBerry QNX has a certified track record of providing a software foundation that is m the most secure and functionally safe in the industry. Volvo brings up the fact that BlackBerry is a well aligned with the automotive challenges within the electrification, automation, and connectivity and the technical solutions needed in the domains. Now, Volvo and Scania obviously are looking forward to the future in terms of manufacturing and developing fully all automated commercial vehicles. Now it speaks volumes that they choose Q QNX instead of trying to figure it out themselves. To be honest, it would be a waste of resources for these companies to try to figure it out themselves. As BlackBerry QNX has a pedigree proven by certification to ISO 26262 Azel D. This is the highest level of achievable certification for automobiles in terms of safety. This essentially means that QNX essentially got a stamp of approval from accreditors ensuring that malfunctions that can lead to life-threatening situations are minimized or eliminated. These functions include uh, anti-lock braking, uh, electric power steering, engine management. You don't want the cars accelerating uh, unwantedly and you don't want the brakes failing on you because in terms of autonomous driving, that would be very dangerous and it could cause lives. What's great about back BlackBerry Kunix? is it has a long history in mission critical operations in industries like the medical field, industrial automation, oil and gas, trains, and aerospace. Now they already have experience and infrastructure to get into automotive space to ensure the safety is the top priority. These are industries where system failures could lead to death. So essentially, QNX's systems are fail safe. For example, a mobile OS system does not require the same fail safe, safe systems like automotive OS systems because a failure failure in software driven vehicles can lead to death and it could drive off the bridge if, potentially if something messes up. What makes BlackBerry QNX so safe is it's built off the microkernel real-time operating system, meaning all OS services are separate user processes. This means that a failure in one process does not impact the system uh, of other processes. For example, in, in order for autonomous vehicles to work, it, it will need to take and comprehend a lot of data. It can potentially lead to application errors shutting down in the software of a vehicle. Uh, by having this microkernel design, critical systems like brakes and steering will, will not be affected if there are minor glitches in, let's say, you know, the lights and non-important systems within automobiles. This will ensure that critical systems that are life-threatening will not be affected in terms of hacks and so forth. Because BlackBerry QNX was built on a pillar of security and has all these certifications from accredited sources, manufacturers looking to develop autonomous vehicles are more likely to get approved for high, higher level autonomous vehicles. Many people don't really understand different levels of 
driving auto automation. For example, you know, Tesla is not really a self-driving car. It's only partially automated. It's at a level two, meaning that humans still need to monitor all tasks and need to be able to take control at any time. Now, this is level two, and it goes from zero to five. The route Tesla is taking, uh, it's developing their own OS system through Linux. It doesn't have the same security and the same experience in terms of developing uh, fail-safe systems. You know, even though they're at a uh, level two autonomous driving, it'll probably be hard for them to get past that. The reason is that they're not looking to get these ASL uh, D certifications and I ISO 26262, you know, it's a it's going to be highly regu regulated in terms of autonomous driving and the government will need a certification. It doesn't seem like, you know, Tesla is even close to even trying this to get this universal functional safety standards that are put in place. You know, even though their autonomous driving might work like a level three, it will never be treated like a level three. You know, no logistics companies or autonomous transportation companies will go for it and go for their OS system if the government does not approve the driverless vehicle. Fail safe secure systems are very important because it's a life and death situation. You know, BlackBerry has that in place and it's got the stamps of approval. So anyone looking to develop autonomous vehicles will have an advantage building it off BlackBerry Qnix OS systems. Well, okay, you're, you're probably thinking, so what? So what if BlackBerry is cornering the autonomous vehicle market, software driven vehicle market, you know, commercial automotive market. So what, they're not making money from Qnix. It's all about revenue. Well, BlackBerry Ivy is coming out soon. And BlackBerry will be the platform that these vehicles will be running on. John Chen reiterated on his earnings call what we've been saying about the monetization of car driven data. It's going to be a 450 to 750 billion dollar industry per year by 2030. By being in nearly 70% of the EV in the market and cornering the commercial automotive industry, BlackBerry Automotive OS will be in almost every vehicle. This will create a monopoly as applications will be developed on BlackBerry's back. To unify all communications between vehicles, it, it makes sense that there won't be much diversity in operating systems. This will only ca cause confusion and uncertainty. For example, it would make more sense in terms of simplicity, in terms of public roads to communicate with one type of operating system. Let's say a traffic light in the future will communicate with autonomous vehicles telling it when to stop, when it turns green, when it turns yellow, and when it turns red. If there are multiple operating systems, you know, it's going to be a hard time for the government to develop public utilities to accommodate for these new operating systems that you know startups might try to create since blackberry is in almost every vehicle it only makes sense to create something that communicates with the blackberry os system by having this control and creating this ecosystem this will allow them to co collect money in every corner revenue is going to come in the future so let's talk about the potential of being the software the commercial automotive vehicles are built upon since we're talking about Volvo and Scania. Trucking in itself is responsible for most freight movement in the US. It's worth around $791 billion in 2019. Now, BlackBerry will be offering solution for this $791 billion industry. Now, let's say trucks become level four, level five in terms, in terms of automation, where you don't need a driver. This will allow the trucking industry to replace truck drivers. So let's do the calculation. How, how much money would they be saving if they replace every truck driver for the trucking industry? There were 2 million employed truckers in 2019. And the average salary for a trucker is between 34,000 and 68,000. Let's say that's $40,000, $45,000. If you multiply that, that's around $90 billion per year. By creating an OS system that allows for high level autonomous driving, it would save the trucking industry around $92 billion per year. Let's say a company can build this autom automation uh, solution in terms of an application on the back of BlackBerry IV and they collect this revenue. 
Just by collecting a commission of 5%, that would be $4.6 billion in revenue for BlackBerry each year. And I want you to keep in mind, keep in mind that Apple collects 30% on the App Store. I'm being conservative how much money in terms of commission BlackBerry can build by having this operating system that auto software driven auto, automotive vehicles will be built will be built upon. And that calculation right there, that's just for helping the automotive companies create a solution for auto, autonomous trucks and replacing truck drivers. There are many other solutions that are required from software driven automobiles. The amount of growth for BlackBerry in the future is endless because they are holding the BlackBerry IV is holding the operating system and creating an ecosystem for software driven cars. And right now, BlackBerry, I do agree. I do agree that there's some weaknesses in terms of revenue growth. But how come, how come we don't look at BlackBerry in terms of potential future revenue? For example, we do that for companies like Workhorse. They literally have no revenue. They have trouble fulfilling orders of five vehicles, but at its peak, it was valued at $5 billion. BlackBerry right now is valued at $5 billion. You know, BlackBerry in itself, they may never get the startup valuation treatment, but it's definitely have startup growth potential. You know, you can hop on the rocket right now before it launches, or you can stay on earth wishing you loaded up. But the potential, it's obvious for anyone looking willing to look a little harder to see what the future is like in term, terms of autonomous vehicles and software driven cars. Now that's it for this video. You know, we were just very fired up making this video. You know, I just saw the stock price drop even after the news with the partnership with Volvo. You know, it's just crazy to me. What do you guys think? How long do you think it's going to take for people to start catching on and seeing the potential in this company and viewing it as a great start of potential growth? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked our content, please give us a thumbs up. And we use this as feedback as to whether we're making content worth watching. And thank you very much again for watching. If you like this video on BlackBerry, make sure you check out our other videos as we do deeper dives into why BlackBerry is such a great stock and company.